And I also determined I pay them less than the amount of money I would have to declare on my taxes. If you paid them more at the uh, taxes, like you employed somebody? Yes, at the point you were paying someone more than $10,000 a year or $2,000 oh. a quarter, so yeah. they become a domestic employee and you have to pay their Social Security and everything else. But oh. less than that, and since they have a business license, I am paying them as an independent contractor and I'm allowing them to clean on their own schedule, they clean their own stuff, all the rules, it's just tough. Yeah, I can be a dumb to the Supreme Court. That was less than what you that was doing. I know, I know, I'm staring at the camera. Hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome to August. Uh, we haven't taped in a while, uh, and we were, we were chatting before the show, uh, about various stuff uh, and then John was trying to surprise me and then I was like I'm just gonna fool John by just staring at him after he points at me as if he's a bad pointer person like he just he pointed and I, I want to make him feel bad about his life and his life decisions I don't think it worked uh, John John's okay with John's life John he's totally happy yeah he's giving me a thumbs up signal that's the that's what a desperate sad man does they just all the time. Anyway, that's I was, this isn't John's show. I mean, I'll be on John's show next week, you know, keeping him company before we're all dead. Good times. Good times, everyone. Uh, uh, we haven't taped in a while because uh, we were busy in June, and then like in July, it was a holiday, and we didn't want to make everyone come work on a holiday, uh, and also they didn't want to work on a holiday. So we're, we got to August. We've had like Two months of No Keith Explains. I don't know how you people have gotten by, uh, except for the fact that I'm behind on editing, so you also didn't have Keith Explains for the two months before that. Um, tonight's, apparently, you know, when three months go by and I haven't taped at the studio, they change things. Uh, like they have summer camp, so we had to use a different place for the green room, and it's just a big table, and so we're eating our dinner before the show at this big table, chat with people. That's okay. It's, it, they call it the green room, but it's not green. But the actual green room is also not green. But it's full of, it's green. They, they say it's green-ish, but it's not. It's barely green. No, 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 no. No, it's not. If I hold a lime up to the wall and they're not the same color, it's not green. Uh, uh, anyway, apparently in the time I've been gone, they've changed the soap in the bathroom. And this... It, it's bothered me. It's bothered me for like the last hour. I went in, I washed my hands. I was like, there's something different here. And then I realized it's because the soap is different. I look forward to the soap at the station. Um, it's, it's like one of my little pre-show rituals. They have this particular pink hand soap that comes out of the dispenser. Uh, it's very pink. It's like uh, Pepto-Bismol pink. And it has a smell that to me is the smell of soap. Like it's the smell of the theory of clean is what this pink soap smells like. So like when I wash my hands, I'm like, well, I, I've now experienced cleanliness by being here. I've washed my hands. I am surrounded by the, the idea of uber cleanliness. But no, not now. Now it's this crappy, clear, vaguely herbal soap. Put the whole show off. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, really. Uh, I made a bunch of notes, but if the show sucks, it's because of the soap people. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned this before. On a similar soap topic, uh, I can only wash my hair with green shampoo. Uh, I don't know why. I've always washed my hair with green shampoo. There used to be, there used to be a lot of green shampoos. Now we're down to two green shampoos. If you can find Pert, Pert's a good green shampoo. If I can't find Pert, like if I'm on vacation and I've run out of shampoo, I have to use this crappy green herbal essence stuff that smells like lilacs and makes me unhappy. Um, uh, hats. Um, there, there comes a time in a man's life when he starts wearing hats. I don't know why. But every older man I know owns a, a bunch of hats. 
and puts them on at different times for different reasons. And I, I have become one of these men. Like now I have, I have my, my hat with a brim made of straw, which I wear when it's sunny out if I want to not have the sun land on the back of my neck, which is what I tell myself. But really, if I don't want the, the spot at the back of my head where I have no hair anymore to get sunburn, because I've been outside, and because you can't put suntan lotion on the back of your head, if you have any hair, it just doesn't work. So I have hats. I have this, this straw, I have this, this kind of strawy, I think of it as a crocodile Dundee hat, although it's not because it doesn't have shark teeth. Um, uh, I also have a turtle hat. I'm not going to talk to you about it anymore, but just picture me with a hat on that looks like a turtle, and you'll realize I've gone over the edge. Uh, I wear my hats when I'm walking to work. Uh, one time I forgot my hat, and then I got to work, and then I was like, why does the back of my neck itch? That's why i got to wear hats, people. Um, on that topic, uh, I continue trying to exercise. Um, I fail more than I succeed. Uh, I've, in fact, made an appointment with a nice lady uh, who I will pay money, and then I will go exercise next to her while she berates me and explains why I should be exercising better and more. I mean, she said she's going to be motivational, and then I explained to her, I don't need motivational. I need to pay you money so that if I don't come here and exercise, I feel like I'm wasting money. And while I hate exercising, I hate wasting money more. So I will come do the thing I don't like in preference to the other thing I don't like. And if along the way you could tell me how bad of a job I'm doing, that might be motivational in some weird messed up way. Uh, and then she said, you should talk to someone else about that, like a therapist. And I said, I would have to pay the therapist. <laughs> and that's not a road I'm ready to go down yet. Uh, but mark my words, in several years, I will probably be here explaining to you how I have had to start paying a therapist because my fitness trainer made me feel too bad about all of my life decisions, uh, I guess is where I'm going. One of the things, uh, not only her, uh, when I was young, I used to hear people say, it's important to stretch before you exercise, and I never understood this. I was like, doesn't the exercise stretch you? Like when you are running, or lifting things, you are stretching your muscles. So let's, let's skip that stretching part, which seems boring and pointless, and just get to the exercise you don't actually enjoy part. That way it will be over sooner. Um, I've reached the point now where I'm like, geez, my legs are tight. I think I'll go stretch them. Like, Never in my youth did I think I would voluntarily go stretch for any reason whatsoever. Um, and now, like I have been, everything hurts. And then I have gone and laid down on the floor and then lifted my leg up above my head and kept moving it closer to my chest in what I can only describe as one of the most painful things I have ever done in my life, voluntarily possibly the most painful thing I ever voluntarily do. Because I, I make this face like this, and I just keep making it for like the four or five minutes that I'm stretching. Uh, I can only do this when I'm alone, because I am terribly afraid that if other people are nearby and see me, they will assume I'm having a heart attack and dying, or otherwise something terrible is going on. Uh, I, I don't know how other adults stretch and don't feel horribly, horribly painful while doing it. Uh, so if you, if you know, you can, and the other thing is people are like, well, after you've been stretching for a while, you'll just be all stretched out and then it won't hurt. And I'm like, that day cannot come quickly enough. Um, 
I've gone, it's almost like you should get a sports massage and tell them you have tight calves and they should work on them. And so I paid a nice guy, like for real, like he has a license and in, in the fitness center. And I was like, they s tight thighs, they said try sports massage. And he's like, okay. You ever had a sports massage before? And I'm like, no. He's like, okay. Now I know why they ask that. Like sports massage is again, the most one of the most painful things I've ever had done to me, which I paid for. Like at the end of it, like he just kept rubbing things and s rolling his arm back and forth. And I was like, man, this really hurts. I'm definitely getting my money's worth here because ordinarily like 50 minutes would go by and I would not regret my existence many, many, many times. Whereas now, hey, not only am I $55 poorer, uh, everything below my waist hurts and I'm supposed to be happy about that. Switching topics. Um, uh, we went to New Mexico earlier this spring, uh, which, which was fun. Uh, and I went there for, uh, for a meeting, but we, we did, you know, vacation-y things because I took vacation days and we've never been to New Mexico before. Uh, and we went to the Museum of Atomic Science, which is in, I don't remember, Phoenix or, it's where we were. I think it was, no, it's not Phoenix. Phoenix is in Arizona. Albuquerque. Albuquerque, the place you turn left if you're Bugs Bunny. Um, weirdly, we had been in Albuquerque like 15 years ago and we went to the Museum of Atomic Science then, but they moved the Museum of Atomic Science from where it was to another place, and then they moved it from that place to this place. I was kind of freaked out because to me, museums are not things that move around. Like a museum is at a particular place and it's always at that place. Uh, to me, the prototypical museum is the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. It's in Chicago. Uh, once a year when I was in school as a child in Wisconsin, we would get on a yellow bus and we would go to the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry for some reason. Uh, I don't know why there were no museums in Wisconsin to go to. Now that I'm adult, I know why there are no museums in Wisconsin to go to. Like the closest museum is an hour and a half away in Chicago. Uh, but we would go to this one museum uh, and I, always remember looking forward to it. Occasionally my parents would also take me there, which was, it's weird to go to a museum with your parents when you have gone there on a school trip, because on the school trip you have a little bag with your lunch and your name on it, and you kind of look forward to the middle of the day when you will always go back to the lobby, and then they will pass out your lunch bags, and you will open the lunch bag and take out your sandwich and your apple and your can of fruit punch, and. Eat. With your parents, you just go to a museum and eventually they're like, well, it's time to go. You're like, what, no sandwich? No. Um, anyway, the, the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry, it's in exactly the same place. It's in Chicago. It's, I don't even know where it is. It's like near the lake. It doesn't move. It's the one end of it has a World War II sub and the other end has a fake coal mine for some reason even though there's no coal mining in Illinois that I know of. Um, Museum of Atomic Science apparently used to be on an Air Force base and then they moved it to a historic district and then the historic district people went, you gotta get out, you're ruining the vibe and then they moved it across town. Uh, and it was, it was interesting because it was full of atomic -y stuff and by atomic -y stuff I mean atomic bomb stuff because they invented the atomic bomb near Albuquerque during World War II, and so they have like, well, this is what the lab where they invented the atomic bomb looked like. And I'm like, well, that's, that's both very interesting and strangely depressing, and it's making me think of things. And they're like, well, and here's a model of the bomb we dropped on Japan. I'm like, wow, that's, again, I have all of these feelings and thoughts in my head. I'm not sure what to do with them. Uh, so that was, that was like a sobering afternoon. Uh, and then after this sobering afternoon, uh, we drove a little bit east 
to a road where if you drive at exactly 55 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, uh, it plays like American Beautiful because they cut ridges in the road and your tires make a noise. And we were like, should we do that or not? And then we were like, well, what the heck? So we did. If you're in Albuquerque and you're wondering, hey, should we drive 10 miles out of town to the road that plays America the Beautiful, or whatever song it is? No, no, don't do it. It's not worth it. Just trust me. It's like your tires are playing whatever this crazy song is, and then it's over, and you do a U-turn, and you drive to the airport. <sighs> what else did we do? Um, we, were, we, we were in Albuquerque. We were also in Santa Fe for a couple days. Uh, Santa Fe is... Santa Fe is, is like the Los Altos uh, of New Mexico compared to Albuquerque. Like everything in Santa Fe is kind of artsy and expensive. Um, uh, and so we were there at a artsy, expensive hotel. Uh, again, much too classy for me. Uh, I felt very uncomfortable the whole time because everyone was very nice to me. Uh, and then I went back to Albuquerque and stayed in the Holiday Inn and I was like, this is great. I, I get this. Uh, but while we were in Santa Fe, uh, we decided to go get hot chocolate at this place that someone said, hey, they sell good hot chocolate there. We were driving by, and they're like, hey, that's the hot chocolate place. Let's go get hot chocolate. So we go into the hot chocolate place, and then they ask, are you here for the thing? And we're like, uh, is hot chocolate the thing? And they're like, no, the meetup. We're like, no. I'm like, oh, the Governor's can candidate for governor is going to be here. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then we got our hot coffee. And then like 10 minutes ago, one of the two people running for governor in the state, Governor Jack, Jeff, or Jeff, is his name, uh, just shows up and gives like a 20-minute campaign spiel uh, about why he's running for governor. And he's spouting numbers and facts off and he's talking about stuff. And I'm drinking hot chocolate standing like 10 feet away from him. Uh, and at the same time, we were having our governor's primary in California. I was like, it's weird that in New Mexico, I, am, I have paid $6 for a hot chocolate, and I am standing 10 feet away from someone that might be governor in four months. In California, this would have cost me like $10,000 to get this close to anyone running for governor. I was, I was kind of freaked out. He was a nice guy. Uh, pink soap. Um, okay, uh, occasionally, occasionally I ask you folks for help on my TV show. Um, I'm asking you for help tonight because I'm, I'm, I'm stymied here. Um, as you know, I'm fabulously wealthy uh, because of the great business decisions I have made and the many successful ventures I have started entirely from thoughts that happened in my head, uh, which I then turned into the real world. And I got another one. Um, it occurred to me uh, that since I got more money than cents, uh, and since I bought me a, a laser engraver that sits in my house not doing anything most of the time, that uh, I could use said laser engraver uh, to engrave line drawings of famous world leaders onto crackers. And then I could put these crackers uh, in tiny acrylic slabs with a certificate of authority, uh, much like you would do with a what you like with like an issue of Amazing Spider-Man number one, right? Except it's a cracker, and I couldn't I could print up a you know a letter of authenticity saying this is an actual cracker with an actual engraving of a world leader on it, and then I could sell those on the internet uh, to people for whom want this. Okay, I agree at this point we're, let's, let's just postulate that there are people that want this. Here's the problem. Uh, I, I don't know what to name the website on which I sell said things. For a while I thought Cracker Cabinets. And what I would do is I would just engrave, you know, pictures of people in the president's current cabinet. Uh, now that has a couple of advantages. First of all, they're all white guys, so a line drawing on a cracker makes sense. I mean, it would be saltines, of course. Uh, 
But secondly, uh, since they change so often, uh, you know, they're, they, you can only buy them while they're on the cabinet. So they would quickly become limited edition things. Uh, but then I was like, what if, what if people don't want to buy line engravings on saltines of people from the president's cabinet? Perhaps I need to broaden this out a tiny bit. But I can't think of a better name. Uh, I got a couple products, like the, you know, I got a, like a picture of Einstein. Einstein on a, on a saltine, I think would sell very, very well. Uh, and by that, I mean someone might buy one once and convince me that this is not a terrible idea I've had. Um, I mean, one, the, the sample we did uh, is we did a line drawing of a Putin on a, on a Ritz cracker. That's Putin on a Ritz. Uh, but that's, he's the only guy you can do that for. Like, there's no other names that make, that, that make fun, you know, like Putin on the Ritz, right? It's got to sound like Putin, and no other world leader's names that I know sound like Putin. Um, we did think we could do a corollary of donuts with a Justin Trudeau. They would be true donuts. You know, I could laser engrave his face on a donut, but I think it's it's harder to put a donut in a slab of acrylic and make it collectible, because the donut's going to get moldy really fast, and that's going to hurt the value. Uh, so if you have, if you have ideas uh, for names, good domain names that aren't taken, don't buy the domain name and then try and ransom it to me, because I just might buy it from you, and then we both feel foolish. Uh, other things. Uh, back to New Mexico. Uh, while we are in New Mexico, we went to this place uh, in Santa Fe, uh, this art installation put on by this group called Meow Wolf. First of all, here's the thing about artist groups. They always have to have names that, that seem clever in some way. So, like, I'm sure Meow Wolf is a very clever name for an artist collective. I don't know how it's clever. It's just kind of weird. I mean, the benefit to clever, weird names is they're probably not taken when you go to buy the domain name again. Uh, anyway, what they did, uh, they took an old bowling alley in Santa Fe, uh, and apparently Santa Fe has old bowling alleys in very large buildings, uh, and they gutted it, and then they built this thing inside the bowling alley, which is, it's an experience. Uh, you pay your money at the front, and someone someone told me about it. Like we were, we were down in Albuquerque having breakfast uh, at a uh, Waffle House, because there are no Waffle Houses in California, and there are Waffle Houses there. And we were like, heck yeah, we're eating at a Waffle House, and we're eating our breakfast at Waffle House. And there's people at the next table. We were like, hey, nice to see you. How are things? And they're like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, yeah, we're from California. And they're like, oh, hey, we're from California. We just moved here. And I'm like, where? I'm like, well, we're from San Jose. And I'm like, oh. So we found people from here that moved there. And we're like, hey, we're going to Santa Fe. Anything we should do? Anything you recommend? And they were like, oh, yeah, there's this thing called Meow Wolf. You should go see. And so I was like, sure, we'll go there. And we drive to Santa Fe, and we go to Meow Wolf. And then they're like, well, it's $60 to get in. I'm like, they should have mentioned that. But OK, $60. Here's, here's our money. For $60, if you're going to see something, it better be pretty good. Here's the thing. It was pretty good. Like, I, I'm not certain it was worth, OK, it was worth $60. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know how, after I'd paid the money, uh, in a, in, in, they, they've, they've fooled me. They've convinced me that this will be great. But it was pretty cool. It's like, like you go in, and the first thing you see is, they have built an entire Victorian two-story house inside this bowling alley, which means the bowling alley was very large. And so I, early on, thought, well, that's kind of impressive, but OK. But that was like a tiny part of it. And there was this weird interlocking story that you slowly figured out as you went from room to room, and you found, you looked at stuff, and you found clues, and you realized that this thing here 
was related to this thing over here and you saw some musical notes written somewhere and then you went somewhere else and you realized you could play those musical notes on a thing and that would make it do something. Uh, and we were there for like four hours just wandering around looking at stuff, slowly piecing this weird story together. Uh, it, was, it was exciting uh, in a very, very difficult to describe way. Uh, if you go there and you've got an afternoon and you've got $60, you should pay the money and go do it. I'm not even sure if it was $60. It was, it was money. Uh, the other thing we did while we were there, uh, I was just looking at Yelp, like, hey, what can you do? And they're like, well, there's a, there's a float place. And I was like, what's a float place? And they're like, oh, they have these rooms that are sensory deprivation chambers filled with water at body temperature and Epsom salts and you, you take a shower, and you go lay in the water, and you float, and they turn the lights out, and then it's quiet, and you're floating, and it's black, pitch black, you can't see anything, and you're just floating there in the water at, room, at, at body temperature, and all you got is the thoughts in your head, and that for, that was kind of terrifying to me because I was like, I don't know if I want to be alone with the thoughts in my head for an hour. What, what will happen? Well, I lived. I lived is what happened. It was, it was an interesting and strange experience. Um, hours a long time to just lay there and think about stuff. And I thought about a lot of stuff, some of it more than once as I recall. Um, Loretta also did it, and she was like, oh, I, they just told me to slowly count backwards from 100, and I did that a couple times, and then I was relaxed, and I was like, yeah, I kind of got bored around 72 and stopped counting, and then I just lay there and thought about stuff and reflected on my life and then started making mental notes and then looped back and thought about stuff and it was it was weird if again if you want to be alone in your head you could do one of these things they're they're popping up everywhere like now i've discovered there's two of them near me and i'm wondering whether i should go back and do it again or whether i should not go back and do it again i didn't even get to any of these like i was going to talk about star wars i was going to talk okay uh, next month uh, maybe we'll talk about all of this stuff next month I didn't get to my cards. I bought this card game, which is just random stuff. The theory is, it, it, there are rules. I don't know what they are.